In orbital mechanics, the Hohmann transfer orbit is an elliptical orbit used to transfer between two circular orbits of different radii in the same plane. In general a Hohmann transfer orbit uses the lowest possible amount of energy in traveling between two objects orbiting at these radii, and so is used to send the maximum amount of mission payload with the fixed amount of energy that can be imparted by a particular rocket. Non-Hohmann transfer paths may have other advantages for a particular mission such as shorter transfer times, but will necessarily require a reduction in payload mass and or use of a more powerful rocket. A Hohmann transfer requires that the starting and destination points be at particular locations in their orbits relative to each other. Space missions using a Hohmann transfer must wait for this required alignment to occur, which opens a so-called launch window. For a space mission between Earth and Mars, for example, these launch windows occur every 26 months. A Hohmann transfer orbit also determines a fixed time required to travel between the starting and destination points. For an Earth Mars journey, this travel time is nine months. The orbital maneuver to perform the Hohmann transfer uses two engine impulses one to move a spacecraft onto the transfer orbit and a second to move off it. This maneuver was named after Walter Hohmann, the German scientist who published a description of it in his 1925 book Die Erreichbarkeit der Himmelskörper, The Attainability of Celestial Bodies. Hohmann was influenced in part by the German science fiction author Kurd Laswitz and his 1897 book Two Planets. Topic: <laughs> Explanation The diagram shows a Hohmann transfer orbit to bring a spacecraft from a lower circular orbit into a higher one. It is one half of an elliptic orbit that touches both the lower circular orbit the spacecraft wishes to leave green and labeled 1 on diagram and the higher circular orbit that it wishes to reach red and labeled 3 on diagram. The transfer yellow and labeled 2 on diagram is initiated by firing the spacecraft's engine to accelerate it so that it will follow the elliptical orbit. This adds energy to the spacecraft's orbit. When the spacecraft has reached its destination orbit, its orbital speed and hence its orbital energy must be increased again to change the elliptic orbit to the larger circular one. Due to the reversibility of orbits, Hohmann transfer orbits also work to bring a spacecraft from a higher orbit into a lower one. In this case, the spacecraft's engine is fired in the opposite direction to its current path, slowing the spacecraft and causing it to drop into the lower energy elliptical transfer orbit. The engine is then fired again at the lower distance to slow the spacecraft into the lower circular orbit. The Hohmann transfer orbit is based on two instantaneous velocity changes. Extra fuel is required to compensate for the fact that the bursts take time, this is minimized by using high thrust engines to minimize the duration of the bursts. For transfers in Earth orbit, the two burns are labeled the perigee burn and the apogee burn or apogee kick, more generally, they are labeled periapsis and apoapsis burns. Alternately, the second burn to circularize the orbit may be referred to as a circularization burn. Topic: <laughs> Type 1 and Type 2. An ideal Hohmann transfer orbit transfers between two circular orbits in the same plane and traverses exactly 180 degrees around the primary. In the real world, the destination orbit may not be circular, and may not be coplanar with the initial orbit. Real-world transfer orbits may traverse slightly more, or slightly less, than 180 degrees around the primary. An orbit which traverses less than 180 degrees around the primary is called a type 1. Hohmann transfer, while an orbit which traverses more than 180 degrees is called a type 2. Hohmann transfer. Topic: <inaudible> Calculation. For a small body orbiting another much larger body, such as a satellite orbiting Earth, the total energy of the smaller body is the sum of its kinetic energy and potential energy, and this total energy also equals half the potential at the 
average distance a display style the semi major axis e equals m v 2 2 minus g m m r equals minus g m m 2 a Display style E equals frac M V carrot two two frac GMM R equals frac GMM two A. Solving this equation for velocity results in the vis viva equation V two equals new two R minus one Display style v caret two equals mu left frac two r frac one a right, where v display style v is the speed of an orbiting body. Mu equals g m display style mu equals g m is the standard gravitational parameter of the primary body, assuming m plus m display style m plus m is not significantly bigger than m display style m which makes v m v display style v underscore m l l v r display style r is the distance of the orbiting body from the primary focus a display style a is the semi major axis of the body's orbit therefore the delta v required for the hohmann transfer can be computed as follows under the assumption of instantaneous impulses delta v 1 equals mu r 1 2 r 2 r 1 plus r 2 minus 1 Display style delta v underscore one equals sqrt frac mu r underscore one left sqrt frac two r underscore two r underscore one plus r underscore two minus one right to enter the elliptical orbit at r equals r one display style r equals r underscore one from the R one display style R underscore one circular orbit delta v two equals mu R two one minus two R one R one plus R two Display style delta V underscore two equals SQRT frac mu R underscore two left one SQRT frac two R underscore one R underscore one plus R underscore two right to leave the elliptical orbit at R equals R two Display style R equals R underscore two to the R two Display style R underscore two circular orbit where R one Display style R underscore one and R two Display style R underscore two are respectively the radii of the departure and arrival circular orbits. The smaller greater of 
R one Display style R underscore one and R two Display style R underscore two corresponds to the periapsis distance a poapsis distance of the home and elliptical transfer orbit typically mu display style mu is given in units of cubic meter per square second as such be sure to use meters not kilometers for r 1 display style r underscore 1 and r 2 display style r underscore 2 the total delta v display style delta v is then delta v total equals delta v 1 plus delta v 2 Display style delta v underscore text total equals delta v underscore one plus delta v underscore two. Whether moving into a higher or lower orbit by Kepler's third law, the time taken to transfer between the orbits is t h equals pi two a h three mu equals pi r 1 plus r 2 3 8 mu Display style t underscore text h equals sqrt frac pi carrot two underscore text h carrot three mu equals pi sqrt frac r underscore one plus r underscore two carrot three eight mu one half of the orbital period for the whole ellipse where a h display style underscore text h is length of semi-major axis of the Hohmann transfer orbit. In application to traveling from one celestial body to another it is crucial to start maneuver at the time when the two bodies are properly aligned. Considering the target angular velocity being omega 2 equals mu r 2 3 Display style omega underscore two equals sqrt frac mu r underscore two carrot three angular alignment alpha in radians at the time of start between the source object and the target object shall be alpha equals pi minus omega two t h equals Pi one minus one two two R one R two plus one three Display style alpha equals pi omega underscore two t underscore text h equals pi left one frac one two sqrt two sqrt left frac r underscore one r underscore two plus one right carrot three right. Topic example. Consider a geostationary transfer orbit, beginning at R1. Topic: 6,678 km altitude 300 km and ending in a geostationary orbit with R2. 42164 kilometers altitude 35786 kilometers
In the smaller circular orbit the speed is 7.73 km per second, in the larger one, 3.07 km per second. In the elliptical orbit in between the speed varies from 10.15 km per second at the perigee to 1.61 km per second at the apogee. The delta V for the two burns are thus 10.15 minus 7.73. Topic: 2.42 and 3.07 minus 1.61. 1.46 kilometers per second, together 3.88 kilometers per second. This is greater than the delta v required for an escape orbit, 10.93 minus 7.73 7. equals 3.20 kilometers per second. Applying a delta v at the low Earth orbit (LEO) of only 0.78 km per second more, 3.20-2.42 would give the rocket the escape speed, which is less than the delta v of 1.46 km per second required to circularize the geosynchronous orbit. This illustrates the Oberth effect that at large speeds the same delta v provides more specific orbital energy, and energy increase is maximized if one spends the delta v as quickly as possible, rather than spending some, being decelerated by gravity, and then spending some more to overcome the deceleration. Of course, the objective of a Hohmann transfer orbit is different. <laughs> Worst case, maximum delta V. Topic: <laughs> As the example above demonstrates, the delta V required to perform a Hohmann transfer between two circular orbits is not the greatest when the destination radius is infinite. Escape speed is square root 2 times orbital speed, so the delta V required to escape is square root 2 minus 1 .4 of the orbital speed. The delta V required is greatest 53.0% of smaller orbital speed when the radius of the larger orbit is 15.5817 times that of the smaller orbit. This number is the positive root of x3 minus 15 by 2 minus 9 x minus 1. 0, which is 5 plus 4 7 cos 1 3 arctan 3 37 Display style five plus four SQRT seven cos left one over three arctan SQRT three over thirty seven right. For higher orbit ratios, the delta v required for the second burn decreases faster than the first increases. Topic: Application to interplanetary travel. When used to move a spacecraft from orbiting one planet to orbiting another, the situation becomes somewhat more complex, but much less delta v is required, due to the Oberth effect, than the sum of the delta v required to escape the first planet plus the delta v required for a Hohmann transfer to the second planet. For example, consider a spacecraft traveling from the Earth to Mars. At the beginning of its journey, the spacecraft will already have a certain velocity and kinetic energy associated with its orbit around Earth. During the burn the rocket engine applies its delta V, but the kinetic energy increases as a square law, until it is sufficient to escape the planet's gravitational potential, and then burns more so as to gain enough energy to get into the Hohmann transfer orbit around the Sun. Because the rocket engine is able to make use of the initial kinetic energy of the propellant, far less delta V is required over and above that needed to reach escape velocity, and the optimum situation is when the transfer burn is made at minimum altitude low periapsis above the planet. 
The delta V needed is only 3.6 km per second, only about 0.4 km per second more than needed to escape Earth, even though this results in the spacecraft going 2.9 km per second faster than the Earth as it heads off for Mars see table below. At the other end, the spacecraft will need a certain velocity to orbit Mars, which will actually be less than the velocity needed to continue orbiting the Sun in the transfer orbit, let alone attempting to orbit the Sun in a Mars-like orbit. Therefore, the spacecraft will have to decelerate in order for the gravity of Mars to capture it. This capture burn should optimally be done at low altitude to also make best use of Oberth effect. Therefore, relatively small amounts of thrust at either end of the trip are needed to arrange the transfer compared to the free space situation. However, with any Hohmann transfer, the alignment of the two planets in their orbits is crucial. The destination planet and the spacecraft must arrive at the same point in their respective orbits around the Sun at the same time. This requirement for alignment gives rise to the concept of launch windows. The term lunar transfer orbit LTO is used for the Moon. It is possible to apply the formula given above to calculate the delta V in kilometer per second needed to enter a Hohmann transfer orbit to arrive at various destinations from Earth assuming circular orbits for the planets. In this table, the column labeled, delta V to enter Hohmann orbit from Earth's orbit gives the change from Earth's velocity to the velocity needed to get on a Hohmann ellipse whose other end will be at the desired distance from the Sun. The column labeled, V exiting Leo, gives the velocity needed in a non-rotating frame of reference centered on the Earth when 300 km above the Earth's surface. This is obtained by adding to the specific kinetic energy the square of the speed 7.73 km per second of this low Earth orbit, that is, the depth of Earth's gravity well at this LEO. The column, delta V from LEO, is simply the previous speed minus 7.73 km per second. Note that in most cases, delta V from LEO is less than the delta V to enter Hohmann orbit from Earth's orbit. To get to the Sun, it is actually not necessary to use a delta V of 24 km per second. One can use 8.8 .8 km per second to go very far away from the Sun, then use a negligible delta V to bring the angular momentum to zero, and then fall into the Sun. This can be considered a sequence of two Hohmann transfers, one up and one down. Also, the table does not give the values that would apply when using the Moon for a gravity assist. There are also possibilities of using one planet, like Venus which is the easiest to get to, to assist getting to other planets or the Sun. <laughs> Hohmann transfer versus low thrust orbits <laughs> Low thrust transfer Low thrust engines can perform an approximation of a Hohmann transfer orbit, by creating a gradual enlargement of the initial circular orbit through carefully timed engine firings. This requires a change in velocity, delta V, that is greater than the two impulse transfer orbit and takes longer to complete. Engines such as ion thrusters are more difficult to analyze with the delta V model. These engines offer a very low thrust and at the same time, much higher delta V budget, much higher specific impulse, lower mass of fuel and engine. A two-burn Hohmann transfer maneuver would be impractical with such a low thrust. The maneuver mainly optimizes the use of fuel, but in this situation there is relatively plenty of it. If only low thrust maneuvers are planned on a mission, then continuously firing a low thrust, but very high efficiency engine might generate a higher delta V and at the same time use less propellant than a rocket engine. Going from one circular orbit to another by gradually changing the radius simply requires the same delta V as the difference between the two speeds. Such maneuver requires more delta V than a two-burn Hohmann transfer maneuver, but does so with continuous low thrust rather than the short applications of high thrust. The amount of propellant mass used measures the efficiency of the maneuver plus the hardware employed for it. 
The total delta V used measures the efficiency of the maneuver only. For electric propulsion systems, which tend to be low thrust, the high efficiency of the propulsive system usually compensates for the higher delta V compared to the more efficient Hohmann maneuver. Transfer orbit using electrical propulsion or low thrust engines optimize the transfer time to reach the final orbit and not the delta V as in the Hohmann transfer orbit. For geostationary orbit, the initial orbit is set to be supersynchronous and by thrusting continuously in the direction of the velocity at apogee, the transfer orbit transforms to a circular geosynchronous one. This method however takes much longer to achieve due to the low thrust injected into the orbit. Topic: <laughs> Interplanetary Transport Network. In 1997, a set of orbits known as the Interplanetary Transport Network (ITN) was published, providing even lower propulsive delta V, though much slower and longer paths between different orbits than Hohmann transfer orbits. The interplanetary transport network is different in nature than Hohmann transfers because Hohmann transfers assume only one large body whereas the interplanetary transport network does not. The interplanetary transport network is able to achieve the use of less propulsive delta V by employing gravity assist from the planets. Topic. See also Bioelliptic transfer Delta V budget Geostationary transfer orbit Halo orbit Lissajou orbit List of orbits Orbital mechanics